The Battle of Rissani was a large tank battle that took place in the early stages of Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. The battle was fought between the elements of the German 4th Panzer Group and the Soviet 3rd Mechanized Corps with the 12th Mechanized Corps, in Lithuania, 75 kilometers northwest of Kaunas. The Red Army tried to contain and destroy the German troops that had crossed the Niemen River but was unable to prevent them from advancing. The result of the battle was the destruction of most of the Soviet armored forces of the Northwestern Front, which cleared the way for the Germans to attack towards the crossings of the Dorgava River. The fighting around Rysseni was one of the main battles of the initial phase of Operation Barbarossa, referred to in Soviet historiography as the border defensive battles and formed part of the larger Soviet Baltic strategic defensive operation. Chapter 1, Prelude Army Group North commanded by Field Marshal Wilhelm Ritter von Lieb, and staging in East Prussia prior to the commencement of the offensive, was the northern of three army groups participating in Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Army Group North controlled the 18th Army, and the 16th Army, along with the 4th Panzer Group. The Germans had 20 infantry divisions, 3 Panzer and 3 motorized infantry divisions. Air support was provided by Luftflotte 1. The Soviet military administrative control over the Baltic Republic's area where the Army Group North would be deployed was exercised by the Special Baltic Military District which after the invasion was renamed into the Northwestern Front. The Front had the 8th and 11th Armies with the 27th Armies in its second echelon, the Northwestern Front had 28 rifle, four tank and two motorized divisions. On the 22nd of June 1941, the Northwestern Front had two mechanized corps, the 3rd Mechanized Corps had 31,975 men in 669 to 672 tanks and the 12th Mechanized Corps had 28,832 men and 730 to 749 tanks, only BT-7s and T-26 tanks were available. Chapter 2, Battle Chapter 2 Section 1, Initial Assault The 4th Panzer Group advanced in two spearheads, led by the XLI Panzer Corps and LVI Panzer Corps. Their objective was to cross the Niemen and Dorgava, the most difficult natural obstacles in front of the Army Group North and to drive towards Leningrad. German bombers destroyed many of the signals and communications centers, naval bases and the Soviet airfields from Riga to Kronstadt. Scholle, Vilnius and Kaunas were also bombed. Soviet aircraft had been on one-hour alert but were held on their airfields after the first wave of German bombers passed dot at 9.30 a.m. on the 22nd of June, Kuznetsov ordered the 3rd and 12th Mechanized Corps to take up their counter-attack positions, intending to use them in flanking attacks on the 4th Panzer Group, which had broken through to the river Dubizer. By noon, the Soviet divisions began to fall back and the German columns then began to swing towards Rysseni, where Kuznetsov was concentrating his armor for a big counter-attack on the next day. By the evening, Soviet formations had fallen back to the Dubizer. Northwest of Kaunas, forward elements of LVI Panzer Corps reached the Dubizer, and seized the vital area Gala Road viaduct across it. Dot by the end of the 22nd of June, the German armored spearheads over the Niemen had penetrated 80 kilometers. The next day, Kuznetsov committed his armored forces to battle. Near Rysseni, the XLI Panzer Corps, was counter-attacked by the Soviet 3rd and 12th Mechanized Corps. The concentration of Soviet armor was detected by the Luftwaffe, which immediately attacked tank columns of the 12th Mechanized Corps southwest of Scholle. No Soviet fighters appeared and the Soviet 23rd Tank Division sustained particularly severe losses, due 88s from Luftflotte 1 attacking at low level, setting 40 vehicles, including tanks and lorries on fire. German forces encountered a unit equipped with the Soviet KV heavy tanks for the first time. On 23 June, Kampfgruppe von Seckendorf of the 6th Panzer Division, consisting of 114th Panzer Grenadier Regiment, or Klerung 57, 1 Company of Pontsieger Battalion 41 and Motorcycle Battalion 6 was overrun by the 2nd Tank Division from the 3rd Mechanized Corps near Skordweil. 
The German Panzer 35 tanks and anti-tank weapons were ineffective against the Soviet heavy tanks, some of which were out of ammunition but closed in and destroyed German anti-tank guns by driving over them. The Germans fired at the tracks of the KVs, bombarded them with artillery, anti-aircraft guns or sticky bombs. A report of the 1st Panzer Division described the engagement. The KV-1 and KV-2, which we first met here, were really something. Our companies opened fire at about 800 yards, but it remained ineffective. We moved closer and closer to the enemy, who for his part continued to approach us unconcerned. Very soon we were facing each other at 50 to 100 yards. A fantastic exchange of fire took place without any visible German success. The Russian tanks continued to advance, and all armor-piercing shells simply bounced off them. Thus we were presently faced with the alarming situation of the Russian tanks driving through the ranks of 1st Panzer Regiment towards our own infantry and our hinterland. Our Panzer Regiment therefore about turned and rumbled back with the KV-1s and KV-2s, roughly in line with them. In the course of that operation we succeeded in immobilizing some of them with special purpose shells at very close range 30 to 60 yards. A counter-attack was launched and the Russians were thrown back. A protective front established, and defensive fighting continued. Chapter 2 Section 2 The Lone Soviet Tank A single KV-1 or KV-2 tank advanced far behind the German lines after attacking a column of German supply trucks. The tank stopped on a road across soft ground and was engaged by four 50mm anti-tank guns of the 6th Panzer Division's anti-tank battalion. The tank was hit several times but fired back and destroyed all four enemy at guns. A heavy 88mm gun of the divisional anti-aircraft battalion was moved about 730 meters behind the lone Soviet tank but was knocked out by the tank before it could manage to score a hit. During the night, German combat engineers tried to destroy the tank with satchel charges but failed despite possibly damaging the vehicle's tracks. Early on the morning of June 25, German tanks fired on the KV from the nearby woodland while another 88mm gun fired at the tank from its rear. Of several shots fired, only two managed to penetrate the tank. German infantry then advanced towards the KV tank and it responded with machine gun fire against them. Eventually, the tank was knocked out by grenades thrown into the hatches. According to some accounts, the dead crew was recovered and buried by the approaching German soldiers with full military honors, while in other accounts, the crew escaped from their crippled tank during the night. The 6th Panzer Division Kampfgruppe commander, General Erhard Raus, described it as a KV 1 which was damaged by several shots from an 88mm anti-tank gun fired from behind the vehicle, while it was distracted by light Panzer 35 tanks from Panzer Battalion 65. The KV-1 crew were killed by a pioneer engineer unit who pushed grenades through two holes made by the at-gun while the turret began moving again, with the other five or six shots having not fully penetrated. Apparently, the KV-1 crew had only been stunned by the shots which had entered the turret and were buried nearby with military honors by the German unit. In 1965, the remains of the crew were exhumed and reburied at the Soviet military cemetery in Rysany. According to research by Russian military historian Maxim Kolomits, the tank may have been from the 3rd Company of the 1st Battalion of the 4th Tank Regiment, itself a part of the 2nd Tank Division. It is impossible to identify the crew because their personal documents were lost after being buried in the woods north of Rysany during the retreat, possibly by German troops. Chapter 2 Section 3 Conclusion of the Battle In the south, by the 23rd of June, Lieutenant General Vasily Ivanovich Morozov, the 11th Army commander, ordered the units falling back to the old fortress town of Kaunas on the Nimunas River to move on to Jonavar some 48 kilometers to the northeast. By the evening of the 25th of June, the Soviet 8th Army was falling back towards Riga, and the 11th Army towards Vilnius and the Desna, a gap opening in the Soviet front from Yukmerge to Daugapils. By the 26th of June, 
the 1st Panzer Division and 36th Motorized Infantry Division of the XLI Panzer Corps and following infantry divisions had cut through the rear of the Soviet Mechanized Corps and linked up. The Soviet 3rd Mechanized Corps had run out of fuel and the 2nd Tank Division was encircled, and almost destroyed. In the encirclement, Solyankin was killed in action. The 5th Tank Division, and 84th Motorized Division were severely depleted due to losses in vehicles and personnel. The 12th Mechanized Corps pulled out of the trap but was very short of fuel and ammunition. The Soviet Baltic Fleet was withdrawn from bases in Liepaja, Vanspils and Riga by 26 June and LVI Panzer Corps dashed for the River Dorgava, and in a remarkable coup seized bridges near Dorgava intact. Chapter 3 Aftermath. The battle is known in Soviet historiography as the Border Defensive Battles, forming part of the larger Soviet Baltic strategic defensive operation. After the battle, the leading formations of LVI Panzer Corps began to enlarge the bridgehead after the seizure of the Divinar bridges and the fall of Dvinsk. On 25 June, Marshal Semyon Timoshenko ordered Kuznetsov to organize a defense of the Western Divinar, by deploying the 8th Army on the right bank from Riga to Livani while the 11th Army defended the Livani Kraslava sector. Kuznetsov also used the 27th Army, moving troops from Hyamar and Sarimar Islands and Riga to Daugapils. At the same time the Soviet released the 21st Mechanized Corps with 98 tanks and 129 guns, from the Moscow Military District to cooperate with the 27th Army. At 5 a.m., on 28 June, Lyushenko attempted to destroy the German bridgehead near Daugapils. Monstein halted on the Divinar but attacked the next day, striking along the Daugapils Ostrov Highway. At Riga on the afternoon of 29 June, the Germans crossed the railway bridge over the Divinar. On 30 June, Soviet troops withdrew from the right bank of the river and by 1 July were retreating towards Estonia. Instead of rushing Leningrad, the panzer divisions were ordered to wait for infantry reinforcements, which took almost a week. Kuznetsov was sacked by Timoshenko and Major General Pyotr Sobenikov, the 8th Army commander, took over the front on 4 July. On 29 June, Timoshenko ordered that if the Northwestern Front had to withdraw from the Dorgava, the line of the Velikaya, was to be held and every effort made to get Soviet troops dug in there. The line at Velikaya fell rapidly on 8 July, with rail and road bridges remaining intact and scoff fell on the evening of 9 July. The 11th Army was ordered to move to Dno but the collapse of the Northwestern Front on the Velikaya and the German sweep to Luga were serious defeats, forcing the 8th Army towards the Gulf of Finland. The German pause had given time for more troops to be rushed to the siege of Leningrad, a long and hard battle.